Probably the basic message of the parable today is pretty simple. God isn't always fair. God doesn't always treat us in a way that matches with our standards of fairness. And I guess on the one hand that should be obvious because um, we're born into a world with equal talents, family backgrounds, we don't have the same DNA. And um, maybe you think to yourself, if I had um, been born in different circumstances, right now I would be, whatever, doing this or doing that. So in a way, we all know that life isn't fair, not if by fairness you mean you only get what you deserve. Sometimes we get more than we seem deserve, to deserve, and sometimes we get less. And because God is behind who we are at the core of our being, and because God has permitted us to come into the world at this time and this place rather than that time and that place, you could say that God isn't fair. Not according to fairness as getting only what you deserve. And that continues all through life. We all know this. No matter how good you are or how holy you are, things ha happen that don't seem to be fair. Um, but you know, even among us, we often find that we all have different standards of fairness in families we find that a lot one person is saying that's not fair that's not fair and maybe the other person is saying no it is fair um, so we shouldn't really be surprised when it comes to between us and god that sometimes our standards of fairness and what he thinks is just or right they don't match up but you know just like often in the family it's possible maybe to, to share, with, uh, share with an old person in the family um, why your situation is the fair one. Um, that often, we, we can sometimes do that when we, we think more seriously about what, what God is doing in our lives. And often, it's about knowing all the different factors that are involved. So like, for instance, it might seem unfair that you can't go to the cinema if you're 15 and you've done your homework or something. But your parent will try and bring to your attention some other factors, something that should change the situation. Maybe grandma's coming over. Maybe somebody's coming to fix the washing machine and someone's got to be in. Whatever it might be, there's some other factor that means the situation isn't as unfair as the first person thought it was. And that can be the same, that is the same in our relationship with God. When we want to cry out to God that our lives seem unfair, basically we're saying, I don't understand what you're doing. And then in faith, we've got to appreciate that there are other factors going on because his aims and goals are different from ours, whether we like it or not. So, okay, looking back at the parable, it might be that there are some reasons that can help us make sense of what the master is doing in the parable. So in the first place, God, or the owner of the vineyard, values the well-being of all of the workers. And whilst it seems really unfair to those who spent the whole day in the vineyard that they only get as much pay as the person who did one hour, the fact is you need a denarius to live on. That was the way the Roman economic system worked. And the guys that did one hour's work, undoubtedly they've got families, they've got to support They've got stomachs to feed. A denarius is the daily pay for a laborer. With a denarius, he can make ends meet. So when the master gives the one denarius uh, to the latecomers, he's showing real care for them, concern for them and their struggles. But that, that bit of information alone doesn't sort the situation out because even the other workers seem to be okay about the latecomers getting a denarius. What they're annoyed of is that they aren't getting more. Maybe they even praised, maybe they thought, wow, the master's been really generous giving them a one denarius. But then they were annoyed that they didn't get seven or something. And, you know, from a logical standard of fairness, that can make sense. But again, there are other factors at play. So like, for instance, what the, the workers, um, the workers uh, who have been in the field the whole day, they are looking at how they feel on the inside and they're comparing it to what they see on the outside of the ones who have come late. 
And that's always a mistake in life, comparing how you feel inside or with what you see outwardly in somebody else. Um, they're comparing their tiredness, their physical exhaustion, the sweat on their brows, the mud on their knees, with these latecomers who finish the day, they're not out of breath, they've got hardly a stain on their shoes, their fingernails are clean, and they presume that's the full story. But it isn't. We've been told, as kind of people looking in on the situation, that the men that were employed at the 11th hour hadn't been sleeping in all day. They hadn't been chilling out in the park with their friends. The reason they were standing idle still is because no one had employed them. They had waited the whole day in, in the town. They'd been waiting the whole day. And as the hours had progressed, they would have grown more and more anxious and worried and stressed out, probably thinking about going home to their wife with no, no money, no food to feed the children. We can imagine they paced up and down. Maybe they went into different shops trying to see if they could do a little bit of manual work, begging for anything. And they're so desperate that there they are, still hanging around looking for work, just when there's one more hour to go in the day. When it's almost impossible that anyone's going to employ them and still give them the wages that they need for their family. So although they come forward with clean hands and with clean shoes, um, that's what the others see. Inside, they are men who have been broken by worries and whose day has been marked by insecurity and fear. The guys in the vineyard, although they were working hard, they knew whilst they were working that they were going to go home with money and they could do their work with a kind of confidence and assurance that things were going to work out. So when the master pays everyone the same, there are factors at play that, that they, all, they don't, simply don't appreciate. Maybe if they were able to really see what the other guys had been through, if they saw their insides rather than just the outward appearance, maybe the master's decision wouldn't seem so unfair. And here's another point, one final point. The parable is meant to be about the church. The vineyard is always a symbol of the church. So laboring in the vineyard, serving Christ in his church, is an objectively good thing, and it's a privileged thing. It's an honor to be a part of it. Even though it might be tiring, you know, it's easier not to pray the rosary every day. Um, it's easier not to read spiritual books. It's, it, and it's tiring to say no to friends or something when they ask you, oh, have you seen that show on Netflix at the moment? When you know it's, it's not a good show for a Catholic to watch. It's tiring to like ring fence your commitment to Sunday Mass and turning down other things that you would have liked to do. Even though these things carry a cost to them, when we realize who we are serving, the master we're serving, and what an amazing project we are part of, serving him becomes a gift and a privilege. A big privilege to serve one hour, and a bigger, bigger privilege to serve seven. We are grateful to God for calling us to help in his work of sanctifying our world, starting with our own souls, and of sharing the Catholic faith with others. And when we look around, there's some people in our lives that maybe simply God hasn't called yet. He hasn't called them into the vineyard. Maybe that's where you're meant to be as instrument in calling them into the vineyard. The point is not about how long you work in the vineyard or even what you do, but that when God calls you from your idleness, you follow his summons. And then whatever you do in your parish, in the daily living out of your faith, the idea is, is try and see it as being part of God's mega project that you are honoured to be participating in. We aren't just labouring for a denarius. Our faith is about gaining eternal life in heaven. And we should desire to have as many co-workers in this vineyard as possible. Because that's what God wants. That's why the master was willing to hire people, even at the last hour, because he wants them in his vineyard. To escape the meaninglessness of life outside the church. And to be part of the only mega project that really matters in the history of the world.
All we have to do is keep working at the task God has given us, to remain true to the Catholic faith at this hour in which he has called us. And then, actually, he will reward us, amazingly, with the same reward of eternal life as the contemplative nuns, as the missionaries in foreign lands, as the persecuted Christians, as our patron saints and the martyrs of our country. God isn't always uh, fair according to our standard of fairness, but if we make it to heaven, we will be singing of the mercies of God for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.